Hey, y'all. So welcome back to the Womanomics Podcast. I'm your co-host, Sierra Bryant. And this is Corinne from, from Freedom Notary Services. You ain't rep where you from, T. Bryant. Oh, sorry. I, you right. I, I, I ain't even rep my set. Excuse me. Let me start over. <laughs> hey, y'all. This is T. Look, hope all is well and profitable. This is T. R. from T. Bryant Notary Services. There and go. this is Corinne Jones from Freedom Notary Services. Yes, and we got a super dope special guest from the DMV. Please introduce yourself to the people. We want to hear you. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Kim from Kimiani Professional Services, located in Maryland, PG County, to be exact. Uh, born and raised in DC, Southside. Yes, indeed. But that's what I rep. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What's up? Well, thank you so much for joining us, being one of our guests. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. I, and I'm super I'm excited to be here. And I'm super excited because I'm born and raised in D.C. I've lived in every part and I'm mm-hmm. residing in PG County as well. So we have got to link up. Oh, yeah. For sure. For sure. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Welcome to Womanomics. You know, our podcast is Soul Care for Entrepreneurs. And here we talk about all of the tools that help you reframe the limitations of your mind. And we always like to start our episodes with the most important question, which is when did you know you could be an entrepreneur? That's a great question. <laughs> Honestly, I never had any thoughts of being an entrepreneur. What happened was the pandemic hit and I was an Uber and Lyft driver at the time. And of course, you know, the pandemic, the world was shut down. So definitely couldn't be driving nobody around. So um, I just went on YouTube University mm-hmm. uh, and I started just looking up stuff. And then I just came across a video that was talking about loan signing age. And I was like, what's that? You know, so then I started looking at it and getting into it. And I was like, oh, this, this, this is a real thing. So I thought it was a scam, to be honest, right? Because I was like, I ain't never heard of this, right? So I started reviewing it and found out it was real. And then once I found out that it was authentic, then that's when I started discovering, like, everyone had a business. I was like, yeah. I have a business? So I started researching that. And I researched that and then the rest is history. Yes. I think so many people have that story. I mean, the pan- I was yep. thinking right before this, um, we started this, um, that if it wasn't for coronavirus, mm-hmm. my life wouldn't be the way it is for the better, mm-hmm. you know, create mm-hmm. it, it just kind of created diamonds out of so much stress and pressure and the globe being just turned upside down. I, mean, I know so many people probably have a similar story. Like the, the pandemic changed lives and it created tons of businesses too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to think about it. You ain't had nothing but time, you know, to <laughs> sit and think about some stuff and like, what I'm going to do for money now, you know what I'm saying? Well, that um, Uber and Lyft wasn't my full time. I have a full time job, I'm a nine to five. But I'm just saying for my side hustle, I was like, what I'm going to do? You know, we can't go outside. So, yeah, it really did. It birthed that. No, that's dope. Yeah, a lot of people, the pandemic turned into a pandemic. Okay, so that's what's up. It's funny because I actually had the same like travel to notary journey as you. Like I was on YouTube and I was doing some meditation and, you know, the guy comes on with with his stamp in his hand. He's like, oh, do you want to make da 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 And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Listen, I so shout, that so guy. shout out to you, too. Right? <laughs> yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> it's funny because I, I literally only see him on YouTube. Like now that I'm actually in the notary world and the notary industry, do y'all see this man anywhere else? Yeah, right? I'm like, like why is he not at uh, any event? <laughs> right. <laughs> he like dropped. He's like the little like YouTube, you know, whatever notary fairy. He just like drops uh, the idea and then like goes away. I'm just like, where is this man at? Where his course at? Where anything at? It's so funny. Yeah. Right. That's so funny. But it's, it's dope because I was I was on there because I was going through a spiritual journey and I was just trying to figure out where I wanted to be, how I wanted to show up. I just didn't really like, you know, what I was doing and how I was seeing myself and I knew I needed to make that shift. So, you know, I just cut off everything and I really started to focus on one, meditating and two, seeing, trying to see where I wanted to be, speaking that into existence for myself. I know where I was 
wasn't where I wanted to end up, but I was like, how the hell do I get there? First, you got to see where you want to go. So I think that's perfect because today we talk about manifesting all like we talking about seeing yourself somewhere else and then going to get that. So I love that we talk about this topic. And I ain't taking no credit. Kim, Kim came up with this topic. I ain't taking no credit. It's all Kim. It's all Kim. Yes. <laughs> hey, well, listen, Corinne didn't want to push me because I'm thinking y'all was going to come up with the topic and I was just going to sit in, right? <laughs> so when she pushed me, I was like, oh, I got to come up with something good. So I just sat down in my little quiet space, which is my car when I drive. <laughs> and I just started thinking and I was like, shoot, manifestation, that's my thing. So I might as well talk about that. So, so tell me, Kim, like, what does it mean to you? I think um, in some ways, the term manifesting manifestation has also become very trendy with people who use it, you know, as a way to just emphasize they have strong beliefs or goals or dreams. But I believe that manifestation is um, or manifesting as a way of being. It's not something, mm. let me go over here and manifest this couple of dollars right quick. No, it's a right, like who you are, you attract, you attract what you are. So I'm just curious, like your own unique perspective about what that means. Honestly, it, it, you hit the nail right on the head. For me, I believe it's a lifestyle. It's mm. not just something, oh, I'm going to go sit over here and like, Lord, give me this $100 today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> No, nah, it's not that at all. For me, it's just, it's, it's catapulted my life. Like before it was a trend, I started this in 2017. I was in a dead end career um, in law enforcement. I was trying to get a promotion as a captain and was snubbed, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And I was qualified and everything. So I had to make a decision to. Am I going to leave this career? Am I st- I'm going to be stuck right here? Am I going to wait it out and hope I get picked again when it's Man. time to apply? Like, you only get to apply to a captain position if somebody leaves. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. only one captain, but you can be <laughs> a bunch of lieutenants, right? So I was a lieutenant uh, for years, and I just was like, you know, am I going to leave or I'm going to stick around and wait around? Um, I owe my wife who was my girlfriend at the time, like everything, because she the one had taught me to have this different mindset, like to believe I can do pretty much anything. And which actually led to the manifestation thing. Like back then it wasn't a thing. It was like, it's more like a thing now, but I just put it out in the air and I was like, Lord, you know, but I believe in God. So I don't want to get churchy, but I believe in God. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Okay. I believe in God, and I was just like, Lord, if you do this for me, you know what I'm saying, if you get me out of this career, you know, I'll do, you know, I'll be better than what I was in that career, and Mm -hmm. next thing you know, I asked them to help me get a project management certification, and that was Mm -hmm. the hardest thing I've done in my life, (laughs) study-wise, it was grueling, and I failed the first time, but then I passed the second time. Past, like, that's no there. joke that yeah. that test is no joke it's no joke right so yeah. i went in there and crushed it and i and it, it was on from there so once i put that in the air and i finally did it and was able to achieve it i was like shoot i can do anything you hear me so that's how it's been and i just put everything i want out in the air it's not nothing about financial at all of course it'll mm-hmm. become a blessing as you manifest different things and of course the financial would go but for me it was just changing my whole life period so I hope that answered the question so what does putting it out in the air mean because some people may not even know what that how to do that okay I get what you're saying but when you say put it out in the air what do you mean by that I mean literally speaking it out loud for me um you know a lot of people they may have their way they might keep it in themselves and they think it out in their mind but for me I literally say it out loud I put it in the atmosphere so everybody you know of course I'm not around a lot of people when I'm saying it but the Lord knows I'm saying it and then everyone around me will pick up that energy because they'll know I'm coming in I ain't coming to play I'm coming in here with (laughs) yeah you know what I mean with the smoke out in the air yeah in the atmosphere (laughs) 
I love that. Well, first of all, shout out to wifey for putting you on the wave. You know, sometimes yeah. it takes someone to teach us something different. So, you know, shout out to you also for being receptive to that and to, you know, convert into that new way of thinking and seeing where it's gotten you. But it is something just so powerful about speaking it out loud. It's something about once it leaves your head and, and it exits out your mouth that like you kind of just like breathe life into it. You breathe it into existence. And people say when you say it out loud, that means you're going to start doing it. You start to, you know, put forth like the actions in order to do it. When opportunities come your way, you're able to recognize them more. So I just wanted to speak a little bit on like, you know, do you, how are you incorporating this on a daily? Like, do you have a morning routine where you get up and you just visualize in the morning, you meditate in the morning, you, you speak and you pray? Like, what's your morning routine looking like? How are you incorporating manifesting on a daily? Okay. Um, my morning start typically for at 3 3.30 a.m., between 3.30 mm -hmm. and 4.00 On Clubhouse. You be up early. Oh, yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, Clubhouse, uh, that room started at 5. Okay. So before I do anything, before I get on Clubhouse, before I do anything, I sit at my desk and I pray. If mm -hmm. I've got to go in the office, I'm in my car. I'm praying before I do anything, you mm -hmm. know covering my household, covering myself, covering my kids, covering my grandkids, you know, covering everybody around me. And then um, once I get, once I get everything out and it's not really about asking for anything per se, it's just basically asking, not, not for like material things, just asking for peace, asking for um, just for my day to be productive and positive, things of that nature. I put that out in the air. Somebody cut me off today, Lord. I don't even care. I'm going to let them cut me off because I don't know what they got in their car. And I ain't going to fight with nobody because they got to get where they got to go. You know what I mean? Things like simple things like that. Simple you know things. what I'm saying? And I just mm -hmm. keep try to keep myself centered that way. So by time, if it's something arise throughout the day, I just take it in and try not, you know, to lose that good peace that I have. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I love that because you know what? It's that brings me back to gratitude, which everybody know I I love gratitude. I'm grounded in gratitude. I live my life that way. And it is something to to just one start your day off with something positive. Like talk about the choices you make in today. Tomorrow's troubles are for tomorrow. Yesterday's troubles is in the past. You want to start off and set in. Um, making good choices, being intentional about making good choices when you wake up in the morning. And so the other thing I wanted to say was like, it's, it's something so powerful about letting, not letting other people control your emotions. You know what I'm saying? Not letting other people control what you got going on. And that just starts to, once you kind of start to learn how to control your emotions, you can control other places and other spaces in your life. And it just brings you to, you know what I'm saying? Just a different place. Like, I don't know. You just be happy all the time. Your skin glowing. You know what I'm saying? You attracting good opportunities to come into your way. And you just, you just, you just, it's just something so like powerful about it. Like, I just can't even explain it. What can you just talk to people about some of the benefits that you have that you've experienced, you know, since you started manifesting, since you started, you know, taking control of, you know, what you got going on in your life and speaking into existence and praying and, you know, incorporating these things. Sure. I mean, since I started, I mean, my whole life has took a, a, a total 360. I mean, mm -hmm. just the way I move the way I respond, the way I act, I mean, mm -hmm. everything. So for me, it, it, it just really changed my life because if had I just stayed the same person I was, I was pretty, I was pretty rough. I mean, a lot of people was like, you know, Kim, you real rough, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, because I'm from the South Side, you're not going to play with me, blah, 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 you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got, at some point you got to grow. So you got to right. let that stuff go and you got to be able to, because I noticed that the way I was was really holding me back. Yeah, I was getting promoted and I was doing different things and I was, but it wasn't the same like it is now. And I can't really, I can't really put my hand on it to tell y'all, mm -hmm. but it's definitely <laughs> different because I just let go some of those old bad habits. 
and mm -hmm. I open myself up to be not a rough person, to be a person that's approachable, to be a person that people can like gain information from because I always put myself in the box like, oh, you can't really learn nothing from me. I've only did this career for all these years and I really don't have anything else to offer. But as I started to evolve, I noticed like, wow, I'm kind of smart, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I was like, whoa, what's the one stuff I never thought I'd do? Especially with that project management joint. I mean, that was hard as a devil, you hear me? So, yeah. I mean, when I did that, I was like, oh, this is all over now. I'm smart as I was. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> like, like, that's yeah, beautiful. That's what it is for me. Yeah, I think that's beautiful because like when you let go of things that like don't serve you anymore, I literally, you make mm. space for the other, the other levels in your spirit, in your mind, in your body that elevates you because it's already there. So like, okay, so you, you got project management certification and let it, let's not get it twisted. You typically licensed too. You didn't say, yeah. okay, yeah. you studied and passed that. For me, that wasn't <laughs> easy. Maybe it was easy for you. No, it, it, was, it was not a walk in the park. I passed okay, so, off, the first, so you, off the first test, but it wasn't a walk in the park. It was, and mm -hmm. I, I was shocked that I passed off the first time too. I think yeah, I was so I was afraid. Nervous, That's how I masked. I was able to pass. But yeah. um, yeah, when you like create, you decide to let go of all that heaviness or the need to mm. constantly be in the defense mode, you just create new pathways and new space and things start to come to you. And I literally think you unlock levels that's already within yourself. You don't have yeah. to like feed yourself all this knowledge and all this wisdom if you were born with it. And and I and you made a point about um, like your morning routine and Tierra has a morning routine of being grounded in gratitude. I think setting the tone and the intention for your day is so important because once you start your day, you go out in the world, you're dealing with kids, you're dealing with people in traffic, mm -hmm. you're dealing with disappointments. I don't know what your bank account is looking like. So some days it may or may not be what it's supposed to be. So you're dealing with life hitting you fast and mm -hmm. sometimes we're on autopilot and we're not even consciously aware how if we're attracting or rejecting. And so if we have a desire to like um, to to manifest the things that we want, you have to be in tune and be a match for that thing. And so I, I understood that, but but I didn't I practice. I used to practice that mindset in the morning and then my day would start and I would become like Tanya. I'll be somebody else. <laughs> Because I didn't, I, I wasn't valuing how important it was to maintain that energy and that mindset all day, because I just was on autopilot and I was just reactionary to life. I'm a, one minute I'm disappointed, disappointed, the next minute I'm angry, the next minute I'm happy. And I was just allowing life to dictate um, what I, yeah. what was happening. And then I was getting just that, a whole lot more of the same. So when I started my morning saying, okay, Okay, I already know what my day is looking like. I can already decide if it's going to be a good or bad day. But no, this is going to be a good day because of all these things, all these things I'm happy about or just who I am and whose I am is enough. So then I would consciously, like, as I'm going into the first, second hours of my day, I was so aware of it because I would say, that's a trigger. My son getting on my nerves already. That's a trigger. <laughs> that's set the tone. So I started to, like, coast no matter what. And then I started to realize that when you change, like the world shifts around you, he started to yes. respond differently to me. My daughter was a little bit more calmer as I'm getting her ready. If I'm driving in traffic, I don't care as much because I'm, I'm really trying to put it into practice. So then I become convicted when I decide to be so reactionary and we ain't perfect. You know, we have our days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But um, it definitely works. And then you start to, things start to like show up. And what I found when I started noticing more good news, or they say like more green lights instead of red lights, I already knew. I'm thinking, yeah, of course, it, it, it does yeah. work. But it's a way of being. I'm not going to act that way today because I want, you know, and we do sometimes because I want good news. I want this outcome to happen. Mm -hmm. But if you start being that way, I just feel like it's so important to protect your mm -hmm. energy and manage and manage um, the energy you bring into a space because you're gonna it's gonna come back to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, that's I totally true. Agree with that. yeah. No, that's completely true. And it's crazy because like I even found myself being grateful for like the little things, just like you're saying. Like I remember one time I always 
always, I feel like I always tell the story because it's just one of the things where I realized what I was doing was making a difference, right? And I feel like once you have that realization that what you're doing is making a difference, that makes you put more effort into doing it. That makes you want to show up this, this type of person in every aspect of your life. But I remember one time I was in a car and I was rushing. I actually did, uh, I did Grubhub too. So I was, I was about to I was going to a delivery, right? So I'm like trying to get there. You know, they be trying to, the people be texting you like, where my food at? Where they be watching on the damn app? You like, listen, if you wanted to, you could have picked this up yourself. Like, trying to, you know what I mean? So I remember I was like at a light and I was just like, damn, like I just missed this light. Like I'm trying to hurry up and get to this restaurant. You know, you're trying to get as many orders as you can. Cause you know, that gives you more money and everything. Right. And I get to this light and instead of being frustrated that I missed the light, I was like, you know what? Let me express some gratitude in this moment. It's easy. It's free. It takes me two seconds. You know, thank you for keeping me safe. Uh, you know, now I have the opportunity to drink some water safely. My car, my radio wasn't working. So I had the opportunity to turn my car off and turn it back on and put on the song that I like. And, you know, by the time that light turned green, oh baby, my whole mood done switched off. We jamming, we about to go pick up this food. You know what I'm saying? Like we out. And it just takes such a, a big a uh, different it makes such a big difference in your day when you choose to express gratitude and you can do it in such the smallest ways and I feel like people sometimes be like I don't know how to do that so you got any tips of like you know how to do that like how to how to express more gratitude or how to show you know how to show more gratitude honestly you just gotta get out your own way a lot of the times a lot of the times people don't realize they're their holder yeah it ain't your mom talk about it dad it ain't your mom it ain't (laughs) dad it ain't kids it ain't none of that it's sometimes it's yourself because you don't even realize from day to day how you just consistently be a certain way and people will make the excuse oh that's just the way i am you ain't gotta be that way just like i (laughs) shared with y'all people tell me man kim you got you know, you know, you don't got to give it to us so strong. You know what I'm saying? I'd be like, man, y'all some suck. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would get go like that. But then I had to think about it like, come on now, Kim. You really don't have to be that rough. And I really learned how to, like, tame my tongue and, like, be more gentler and more understanding. I'd be like, man, y'all are on some fool. I ain't got time for this. <laughs> You so what kind of advice did your wife give you? It's you, you be in your own way. So if you get yeah. let 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 all the hangups go, insecurities and false mm-hmm. um, appearances and stuff like that, you let all that stuff go and really just allow yourself to be you. You you mm-hmm. you'll you'll see so much gratitude. You be like, I thank yeah. you, Lord, for just letting me be yeah. me, because I can't yeah. be nobody else. I thank no. you, Lord, for letting my car get to these fifty. I nice because I'm trying to tell you this little Honda been good to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> just stuff like that. Shoot, I thank the Lord for my little Honda every day. I don't have no car notes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I get to where I gotta go. You know, I don't have no problem. So it's just little stuff like that. And then you'll notice you'll just start being more thankful for the bigger things that, that mm-hmm. come along. But the little things, if you start being more having that attitude of gratitude with the little thing, man, yeah. God open the door. You'll be like, dang, God, I ain't know you was going to give me that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. Yeah. So how do you, um, when things aren't so smooth, like how do you talk yourself off a ledge? Because sometimes I'm in places where they're like of no return. At least I think that. Like I'm gone. I'm so angry or I'm so sad or I feel so defeated. And I know I know the tools. I know how important I am, how important it is to raise my vibration to the place that's in alignment with the things that I want and how I need to feel. But I just don't always feel like I can get there. So like, Mm -hmm. how do you get there? If you feel like, let's say you get upset and you know, when you're angry, you become irrational or you're disappointed or whatever it is. Like, how do you like bring yourself back to the place that you need to be that you know is most effective? Okay. Mm. Um, let me get a good example. Honestly, I just I just take a moment. Like if I feel like I'm about to flip out, like I feel like I'm about to curse somebody. Out. I'm a Gemini. Let me let y'all know. <laughs> so it's Kim, Kima, Tim. It's a couple of them. <laughs> she goes, you know, 
<laughs> that man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> For me, you know, the key key with Tim and all them is man. I just take a moment. If I'm if I'm real mad, I just be like, listen, whoever I'm mad with, listen, let me let me get back to you. Cause you yeah. know, I don't want to say nothing that's gonna damage your spirit. Cause I know my mouth and I will rip your soul to pieces. So let me just go over here and take my time. Or if it's something like deeply emotional, like that would cause me to cry or to be sad. Just let myself be that. You know, I, mm-hmm. I don't stay in it, but I go in it. Mm-hmm. I deal, I deal, and I accept, and I get out of it. See, it's a yeah. difference where if you hold in your emotion and try to pretend, oh, this don't bother me, that don't bother me, then that's when how you develop hatred or, you know, mm-hmm. uh, or whatever type of emotion mm-hmm. that comes with holding something in like that. So if it's something that makes me sad, if I want to cry, I just go ahead and cry. Get it out. I don't mm-hmm. stay in it. And then I just move on. So that's yeah. really what I've been practicing. It's really been working. Because now I feel like I'm totally free with my emotions. Now, am I getting ready to go out here and start crying in the public? No. But, <laughs> <laughs> but if I have to cry, I'm just going to do it. And I used to be like, nah, you ain't going to see me cry, man. Forget that. That's such a da 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 you know what I'm saying? But now nah, I'm gonna cry. Go on, get it out, and go on and move on. Yes. I love that because it's something about like again that's the whole point of controlling controlling your emotions you learn how to process them you learn how to identify them when they come you 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 acknowledge them and then you release them you know what exactly. I'm saying and that's how they don't have a hold on you that's how you learn to control it you just let them come do what they got to do let them serve right. their purpose because sometimes it's just your soul cleansing that's it right. And that's necessary because we exactly. take in so much. Life is an energy exchange. We've taken in so much energy and a lot of energy we're not in control of. I ain't in control of your energy. I'm only in control of mine and how I'm receptive to yours. And if I choose to sit and stay one in that space you're trying to bring me or just in your space, period. I love that you said that. Like, listen, I just need a minute. Like, just give me a minute. Let me get myself right. together. <laughs> Because right. I ain't trying, you said, because I ain't trying to damage your spirit. Damn. But that's, that's I don't want to be responsible for that. Because my Gemini is who will damage a person's spirit. So I'm going to be like, look, give me a second and let me just think about what you said before I snap in this, this camp. <laughs> oh my gosh, that got me cracking up. But that's real. That's real. And some of the other emotions, you know, you experiencing as an entrepreneur, you you're overwhelmed. You're doing so much all the time, you know. Mm-hmm. And to be honest with you, you're our first guest who um, actually has a nine to five. So I would like to okay. get into that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. everybody who's been having have been, you know, full time went to, went and did this full time. But as someone who is building their business, you know, that five to nine or you know that other space, like how is that being able to? you know, juggle your responsibilities at your full-time position and still put in all that energy and effort because you out here. We see you. Yeah. You out here. So so <laughs> how how is that? How is that balance? Um I, I mean, like I said, I, I was born on the South Side, Southeast DC. All you know is hustling. You know what I'm hey. saying? Like you learn hustling at 12 years old. Like, you know, you had a candy lady that lived up the street. You like, shoot, I can be the candy lady too. You know, you always <laughs> had that hustle spirit. You know what I'm saying? If it grab a hold to you from living on the South Side. So for me, I've always been a hustler. I don't know how to sit still. So for me, I've always been doing something. Even when I was... um. When I was in law enforcement, once I got off, I could work 16 hours, 16 mm. hours shift. I get off, I lay down for about four hours, I'm back up. I just can't, i am just never been the type of person to stay still. So for me, I, now that I have my business owner, it just really falls right into line because if I wasn't doing that, I would be doing something else. But this mm. is fulfilling, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I balance it because thank God I have a wonderful supervisor that allows me to have a flex schedule so that's one okay that's mm-hmm. the so that's the key so he he is awesome he don't care i can start at three in the morning if i want to he's like no problem kim and i'll be like thanks sir <laughs> you know? cool. so, yeah i mean he's he's dope so i have a flexible schedule with my nine to five that's that's a good thing and 
with the business. I, I'm doing the business, honestly, even in my sleep, like 24 hours a day. I'm always mm-hmm. thinking. I'm always like, what I got to do, what I got to post, what I got to move, you know, all my appointments for the day. I mean, I'm always in a business mindset 24-7, even when I'm working at a job. I'm still like, okay, I got to mm-hmm. do this, I got to do that. Da, da, da. So the flexibility of the schedule, one. Two, um, just having that hustler um, mentality since forever. It just falls mm-hmm. right into line for me. And then three, I would say that the support from my wife as well, that she's co-partnering with me. She's giving me ideas. She's giving me things that I, it will make the load lighter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it don't really feel stressful because I know a lot of people that say they have a nine to five, they are really stressed out. I'm, I'm not really ever really stressed out unless it's like appointments falling apart. Be like, oh, the appointments falling apart. <laughs> I just wanted you to to give you know yes your peace on that because for the people who are watching this who do have that nine to five who either is already in their business or looking to start up a business it's possible and not everybody's going to have your particular you know situation where you do have these high levels of support around you but it's possible and you can find high levels of support that's that's I ain't gonna say that's easy but it's doable it's something that you can do yeah, and I was I was thinking a big part of support are the people you know you spend your time around too because you, if you spend your time around like low energy people who don't have that as you put it like hustling mindset or don't have big dreams that they gotta work towards like like if you're around that it can be exhausting because you don't necessarily share that vision with other people but i'm i'm getting in circles where people have dreams and goals bigger than mine so it literally energizes me mm-hmm. so it it's does. so important and so i was going to ask you like what's cuz i know you said your wife played a big role in um when you got the disappointment when you were in the in law enforcement like what type of guidance and support was she like feeding your mind to kind of help you start shifting because you said that's how manifestation kind of was birthed within you like so what what kind of guidance and support was she giving you that kind of changed the direction of your life honestly she just told me that i i'm better than their career you know what i'm saying i'm better than that and if they don't see my greatness as far as being a captain forget them and do something else and she just built this stamina in my mind that i could really Mm -hmm. do things that i've never done before and to be honest with you it's nothing that i ever got from my parents because I wasn't raised by my parents. I was raised by my great, great aunt, but she always gave me that hustling mindset to always be able to take care of yourself, be able to take care of your daughter, you know, forget school, go to work. <laughs> she was older. Yeah, she was older. So when she raised me, she was already 50 plus. So she was like, man, forget oh, okay. go get you a job so you can take care of your daughter. You know what I mean? So that's what it was. And that's always what I thought. I need a job. I need a job. I need a job. You know what I'm saying? But now, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I, I'm just going to tell you, man, my wife is a, is, is a boss. I mean, you know what I'm saying? She, she we see a, her. We see yeah, her. She has a degree. <laughs> She's high. She got a high executive level in the government, career. Yeah. I mean, she, she, you cannot be around somebody like that and don't be touched. In some type of way, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Even if you look like you failed here, you okay? Wait a I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> you look like you fell straight in the hole. <laughs> you gotta my, edit my this out. My, my, my iPad fell back. Now nah, we editing this out. This real life. You, you want to get to know us? Get to know us. Like she straight <laughs> fell in the hole. Keep on. Keep talking. I saw that. What's happening? <laughs> But yeah, my but, iPad fell. I'm sorry, y'all. It's no, all good. But no, nah, but honestly, you can't like be around a person like that and not be touched. Because like I told you, she was my girlfriend back then. 
But then when, once I decided to really seriously transition, then I made her my fiance, and then we got married this year. So you know what I'm saying? I know that's right. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't let that go. You can't let that go. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta boss up. You know what I'm saying? So honestly, that's really, I mean, just her, her whole setup. Like she a boss. You know what I'm saying? She goes after what she wants. She don't take no for answer. She just all she mm. just instilled that with me. Trust but verify, like everything. Like, you know, she 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 definitely, yeah, she she she's it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's something about like uh current said just or even you, like just having someone in that space, um, having people around you that's that's that see your vision even if you don't see it completely, that still kind of see it and still can support you and see your greatness and help you install and believe, uh, build up that belief in self. Like, and we already know, uh, we did an episode on the year effect and we just talked about like that crazy Man, belief. In that. You gotta have it. Yes. You gotta have it. Yes. You gotta have it. So, you know, shout, shout out to wifey. I was, pronounce your wife's name. I'll keep saying Yanni. wifey. She, what's her name? Her, Yanni? her name is shout Yanni. Out- Shout out to Yanni. Yeah. Shout out to Yanni. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, I was yes. Hoping she could she, she could hop on and try chop it up with us. Cause you know, we see you, we see her, but we don't really see her speaking. But we know, yeah. you know, she a big part of it. She's a big yeah, part of it. So, you know. Is. Yeah. Awesome. So do I you love do it. anything? Do you do other things like do you meditate? Do you do you have any other like methods to kind of ground you? Or is it strictly like your morning routine um, and how you start your day and how you like kind of defend and approach like conflict and stuff that pop up? You have any other tricks out your hat that get you closer to what you want? Well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not traditional. Okay, no. that's good. Okay. So yeah, so this know, is a safe I, space. Okay, no problem. Okay, come on. So yeah, so you know, I, I do my spiritual thing in the morning. I'm not a meditator per se. You know, um, I really honestly don't have no interest in it. I mean, I'm, I'm just being a friend. Yeah. I don't have any yeah. interest in meditating per se. I know I heard it's great, but I haven't done that. So once I do my setup in the morning. You know, my day is done. I'm gone. You know, day's over. I'm coming home. I make me a cocktail. Okay. And, okay. And, uh, and that's what it is. So that gets me to the next level. You understand? Because I can sit down. I sit down and think about what I got to do for my next day. I sit down and think mm. about ideas that was going to put me further to the goals that I'm trying to reach. Because, we, you know, we in the mm. six-month mark. So it's crunch time. So it's certain things I have to do before I can say, okay, I feel like that my first six months was worth it. You know, like that it, it put me in the space that I need. I still got a couple of things that I'm still working on. But once I get those, then I'll be like, yeah, six months, the first six months of the year was worth it. But yeah, that's what I do. That's good. Yeah. So like, no. like, what are you like most proud of? It, even like in general or okay. in the last the first six months of the year what can you say that you manifested that you're most proud of okay um can i have two things give me yes. both. what you got <laughs> okay um i manifested that i would pass that civic test on the first go round. okay right? hey i, I study honestly around about two and a half three weeks straight Forward, right mm-hmm. and you know I had a date that was already set but I said ah, I better change this date and I made it later so when I changed the date the only date in December that it was working with my schedule and y'all ain't gonna believe this this is when my great great aunt that I told you that raised me from a baby it was on her death anniversary you posted that didn't you uh, yeah I remember that yep uh, it was on her death anniversary. That was the only date in December mm-hmm. that could work because my wife and I was going out on vacation because she's a December baby. So we we was going out on vacation um, for Christmas and everything. And then that, the rest of the time was crazy for work. So 
was like, oh my God, it's so hot. You know what I'm saying? I, then I started thinking, I was like, oh, this is so much pressure because of my pants. And she going to be like, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> you know, so for me, I manifested that. And that, and it came right on through. I was nervous as a mug, I ain't going to lie. But it came right on through. When I saw that pass on the screen, I was like, thank you, Jesus. Let me get out of here. Give me my key. <laughs> so, yeah, that was one. So I was really excited about that because I really felt like I was going to be this amazing loan signing agent. And I tell everybody all the time, I haven't done a loan signing yet. But, hey. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, I was excited. I got the printer and everything. I was like, oh, I'm about to be written. <laughs> Ten thousand dollar moments here, right? right. I'm about to be the ten thousand dollar plug and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but nah, I, honestly, no, nah, I've done some loan modifications like selling packages, small stuff. I haven't like mm. consistently, um, as you would call it, like experienced loan sign age. I just done little stuff. And to be honest with mm. you, I was like, dang, I studied for this test. I don't even do no loan sign. But I had lost interest because I felt drained after I took that test. I was so glad I passed. I was like, man, forget this loan signing, you know? So that was that. And then the second thing is when I did the business credit webinar, I don't know if y'all remember that first one that yeah. I did. Man, I told, so Deshika came to me, Deshika Hill in Michigan, hit me up, was like, yeah, what you do a business credit. I was like, what? Girl, don't teach nothing. Like, <laughs> I, don't teach nothing. I, I, don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. I was like, no, no, no. You must have picked the wrong person because I was just talking about it in clubhouse. I don't teach or anything. She was like, yeah, I know. She said, well, I want you to do a business credit. I was like, huh? That's dope. Yeah, yeah. and to be honest with you, I mean, the reviews from that, Jay, I mean, people was like, I remember that because I didn't attend it, but you had constant reviews. You was just like cycling. Yeah. Like, it, it, so many people were posting, so many people were shouting you out. Yeah. And I, then I remember DMing you. I was like, when's the next one? I, was, I, know, right? I missed out. And to be honest with you, I would have never done that if she yeah. hadn't came to me and was like, no, you're going to do it. You can do it. I was like, no, I'm not a teacher at all. I don't do any teaching. Like, you know, that's not my thing. I don't even have a Zoom link. Like, what? I, you know, what are you do this? You know what I mean? So I was like, yeah. So for her having that, you know, faith in me to do it, it just pushed me to know that mm. at, within this business, I could do something else other than loan signing and I could really utilize this business credit to take me to another level that I wanted to be in my yeah. business so I would say those are the two proudest things because I never saw myself being a person that could teach people how to do something mm. if that makes sense I mean when you're a supervisor of course that's that comes differently like you supervising you know you gotta lay out you know everything the officers gotta do tell them where to go you know all of that stuff but to be responsible for teaching people, strangers, because all these people was all over the place. They was in Texas, Michigan, Maryland, California. I was like, y'all want to see me? Like, I didn't see it. So yeah, I was like, oh, okay. So once I got that, it was like, whoa. I was like, this is really something, you know? So those yeah. are the two proudest things. That's amazing. Yeah yeah nah that's dope and I know you were super proud like seeing how many people actually took what you said and executed on it and yeah. now it's making a difference in their business I know that gotta make you proud all right so we 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 running it back we doing another what we doing you teaching you teaching more what we doing what's happening okay so honestly <laughs> yes um the reason why I started doing the business credit webinar was I'm out chasing the dollar. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. honestly, the stuff that I've get, given so far, I, anybody can research it on their own and, ver you know, vet it and they can find it on their own and they can do it mm -hmm. for free 99. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I always want to make sure that 
I'm not looking like one of those notaries that's chasing the dollar. So I always, I have, I've been conflicted with doing another one because I'm like, I don't want to charge them nothing for real, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And then it's like, man, you can't keep giving stuff away for free, you know what I mean? So, because you can't, you know, keep your business afloat like that. So, Mm -hmm. I am working on the next set for business credit because that first one that I did is really just setting the foundation and getting started. But now that I'm actively getting approvals and stuff like that for my business, I want to be able to break down exactly, hey, this is what you need on your business credit report. This is what, you know, you need to apply. Do not apply until you do this. Because a lot of people is on mm-hmm. Instagram and they slicing it. Like, oh, I can get $200,000 in uh, business credit. Oh, I can do this and I can do that. I'm <laughs> like, yeah, you could. But you're not telling the people exactly how to apply and exactly how their business profile should look. And exactly what is going to get you the approval. So people out here selling people dreams, people buying them, and then they get denied, and then they got to repay them for something else that if you just gave it to them all at once, it would be easy. So that's where I'm at. I'm working on that portion, so I will be doing another business credit model, but I want to have everything in place so I can make sure that the next per. The next set of people that come to me not only will have their foundation, but they're going to have it where they're going to be hitting me up like, dang, can I apply for this? And I got this, I got that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, that's where I'm at with it. I'm going to be pushing that business credit. I'm going to be pushing yes. that. Like, right. We need it. So yeah. many of us don't have a clue. You know, you just because mm-hmm. you start a business, don't know that that doesn't automatically mean that you have all these tools and stuff because you, it's no, oh, I mean, there are books about it, but you don't get a starter package. <laughs> you just right. put yourself in the market and offer a product or service, but you don't know how to necessarily run it and sustain it and fund it. So right. it's a mm-hmm. need for it. And, and a sidebar, I mean, I believe in free things. You already know where I'm about to go with this, Tierra. <laughs> I know, I know, Corinne. Go ahead, get her how you get me. Get but it. <laughs> people, if you when people pay for stuff, they have skin in the game. So if you offer things for free, and, which is great, it's a good lead generator. It, it, it allows people to know and you can add value to the market, all that kind of stuff. But when you're giving away jewels and things that you work hard for, you know you're giving away value. And if people pay for it, they know that they're exchanging it for value. They're giving you value for value and people show up, people pay attention. But when it's free, I catch the replay and the replay goes into a black hole with all the other free replays. And you really want to change lives. You really want to see us win. So it's, yeah. I think it's important for you to um, expect value in return because your time is value. Your knowledge is valuable. The, the amount because you don't want to just look like a like you're just a money grab so you put an effort and 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 care into this so i think people should pay for it and i'll pay for it so yeah yeah, i appreciate it but that's the thing (laughs) that i struggle with you know what i'm saying like i i know that people like oh you know uh you know like every entrepreneur they you know you got your times where you have a high money you got the times you have a low money and I'd be like, dang, you know, I don't know what people's pockets are looking like. And I don't want to look like, you know, one of the little Instagram gimmick people that's like, okay, well, uh, if you buy this $50, such and such, you'll be rich. <laughs> like, you know, that's what they make it seem like. But business credit is so important, not just for the facade of having a luxury vehicle and your business name and all that. If you're not going to make money off of it, to right. me, it's pointless. But that's a whole other topic for another day. But this, okay. <laughs> the, but the business credit thing is so important because especially for notaries, because we got a lot of, not a lot of calls, but that ink and that paper, man, mm-hmm. you, you got a net 30 where you can get that until another check come in from the loan signing agent or whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. It, it's a lifesaver because you could really have a month that, it's really, really slow, and them toners cost like a hundred a piece. So it just, you know what I'm saying? This right. different stuff like that. That's why I want people to get it, not to stunt and not to go buy cars in the business name. You ain't gonna put them on Toro or something like that. You know, you're riding around in G wagon, you ain't got no money coming in. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? 
I wanted to give it to people so they won. It could be not just a notary, but anybody who has a business, mm-hmm. especially just starting, you can have something to lean on. And then business credit also give you the opportunity to leverage. So like, I love when you guys talk about diversify your stamp because yes, you have to diversify your stamp. And outside of the stamp, if you want to do different things within the business, you need funding. You don't want to be yep. coming out your personal pocket money trying to fund an uh, idea when you have endless funding for a small business, a women-owned business. You know how much money the government is trying yep. to get women-owned business? Black-owned business? Man. <laughs> reason why I can't participate in that is because I'm a federal employee. But if I was not, yeah. right. <laughs> I'm just blessed. But no, seriously, like black-owned um, black businesses, women-owned businesses, you get that um, certification and it, you got that certification. Mm. You open the doors, grants, government funding, government contracts, all types of things. So that's what I want to be able to expound on. Not just talking about getting business credit and credit cards and running it up the like this is just like personal credit you gotta pay it <laughs> like, <Right. laughs> like you gotta pay it you know what i mean so yeah that's what i want to do next i want to be able to teach especially a black women how to get their business certified and how to get open to grants free money for your business mm-hmm. and open your doors to government contracts i've been studying it and i have not got it to where i feel like i want to put it out there so once i finish you know getting all the ins and outs i can make sure that the information is consistent and you know mm-hmm. step by step that's what i want to do next oh i'm excited i love that yeah, that's i awesome. know that's me important. too that's important. <laughs> and for me i want to see everybody win it's not about me trying to be like oh i'm the next business credit guru of the world you know what i'm saying <laughs> None of that. I just want to, I've just been so excited from studying it and knowing that it actually works. And for me, I just want to make sure everybody know about it. Cause even if you know about it, it's, it's, it's a process and it, and, and people need to tell people that it's a process. It's not though I'm going to have a hundred thousand in business credit right. overnight. It's a process and people need to know how to work that process. Cause everybody don't even have a lot of money to even pay the net 30. So you got to be realistic on what you're applying for to know that Mm. this is what you need, not want to have. Like somebody can go out here and get an Ikea car, but do you do real estate? (laughs) Do you, I mean, what do you need (laughs) for? Like different stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? To make it make sense, you know what I'm saying? Right. No, you absolutely right. That's good. Listen, charge for that because at the end of the day one you're actually doing it you're doing the research you're putting forth like all the energy and effort to combine that information and make it digestible for people who don't have time to do it don't want to do it and if they are doing don't know what the hell they looking at so understand that all of that time you putting them on the back end you know that that is going to put you ahead and, you know, people are going to start, you know, looking at you for that type of information. You might not want to be a guru or claim to be a guru. Listen, my Instagram name is uh, gratitude, guru, gratitude, or gratitude guru, whatever it's called, my personal account, because at the end of the day, a guru is some is a teacher who initiates it, who initiates change. Okay. Yeah, so I like that. at the end of the day, yeah. So you you're teaching people to initiate change and learning a different way to fund their business, learning a different way to sustain their business, learning a different way to leverage these other opportunities, these other funding opportunities to make their business better and teaching them how to do it correctly. So understand what you're doing out here, Kim. It ain't no small nothing. Yeah. Okay. That's that. that. I no mean, not just like to stay out of the way, you know what I mean? Not just like give my little, you know, my little two cents, my little, you know, to my little. Nah, we manifesting big. 
you, we, okay. we make space for big the, you know the more you give the more you receive it creates new pathways and opportunities to cover even more territory so it's all in how you look at it it's not about yeah, getting a little yeah. something running back out that's the whole point of our even discussion today yeah, so we gotta right. think bigger it's not about robbing anybody it's about blessing them with knowledge that opens up gateways so that knowledge that you're giving them in these in these sessions they're taking that and creating abundance from it so it's all about i mean you know this it's all about how you look at things it's an honor to be in a space with somebody who is an expert and i don't have to figure it out you say i can just go and research it if it was that easy we would all be out here with perfect business credit okay Okay. you're right you're right right. yeah it it, it does a lot it it does it takes it's time consuming you know what i mean because you want to be able to tell people the 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 proper way and to tell them the you know the good way so they can just you know have a have a nice setup for their business so it it, and i want to make sure i'm just not director directing it to notaries it's for anyone who's a business owner yeah yeah, so yeah, that's that's absolutely. The thing. Y'all are absolutely right. Yeah, I just try to <laughs> stay out the way. You know what I mean? And just do the thing. Go back. But no, we right. want you in the way. We need yeah, to. Right. We don't want. We don't want because yeah. it's more expensive for us to go out here and make mistakes. We paying yeah. regardless. Yeah. So yeah. I would rather yeah. pay for the shortcut, the hack, the payoff. That's what I want. The yeah. learning curve. Yeah, yes. cut that yeah. learning curve. Cut that learning curve. And people are starting to realize that too. There's just so much benefit in investing into yourself, investing into knowledge and mm-hmm. cutting your learning curve. So at the end of the day, if that's all they benefited from it, then hell. Cause at the because also at the end of the day, you're not responsible for them executing. Yeah. You were just responsible for the information that you give in. We know we're gonna get quality information because we're seeing you getting approved. We seeing you leveling up in your business. So you, mm-hmm. Kim, stop playing. I got that. Uh, yeah, I got that. Uh, I, I respect stop playing. It. Yeah, I respect it. I respect it. Yeah. That's what's up. Well, we want to thank you so much for coming on here, joining oh, us. Oh man, I'm, I'm still there. <laughs> for real. Nah, you went off. You did. You gave us so many good gems and gave us so many just different things to think about and teaching us like we don't got to be the same person we don't got to be where we come from we can right. always level up we can always change so and we can we start by speaking it into existence we start by visualizing ourselves like that we start by taking accountability and again recognizing that you can change so I love that that was it that was the one yeah it's never too late it. never too late never too late yeah <laughs> So, yeah. so last thing, last thing before we wrap it up, what's one big thing that you uh, are looking to manifest? What's something crazy mm. big? I'm gonna put you out there. What's something okay. crazy big that you that you believe and that you are moving toward is gonna come to fruition? Okay, you want to know for real? Yeah, yes. <laughs> my 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 next big thing. My next big thing. I'm getting into tax lean. Right. Mm. I want to get into tax liens. It's a specific formula to obtain tax liens, and it's it's beneficial to people that want it. That's not really trying to do the whole investing type of thing. If you, you get what I mean, yep. you're not trying to flip houses and you know get them, you know all that. I want to get into that, and my goal is to within 2023. I want to have my business as owners to 10 different properties through tax. Ooh, I love that. It's yes, already that, that's done. fire. It's and done. I, and I've been talking and I've been saying it for a minute. I've been talking about tax liens since 2020, right? Since we went into the pandemic. And I was like, I know I'm not gonna be a realtor. I know that I really don't have the capital to do you know that hard investing you know right now but that was before i learned about business credit so the business credit would lead me into this tax lien thing that i want to do and that, that's that's yes. my next big thing yeah i love that that was such a good question Kurt. now you got to answer it now i'm putting you on the spot go ahead what's my big thing ma'am okay 
So my, <laughs> my so what I, what I want is to live a life of comfort. So oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to craft it and say the actual how, but, mm-hmm. but I want it to be comfortable. I don't want to be hustling, racing, uh-huh. competing. I want to be comfortable. I want my children to have the, the best things to set them up for, um, to be responsible, amazing adults. Mm-hmm. So I want to have abundance flowing in so I can do those things. And it's not so much so I can buy all these things, but I want to, in these few summers of life that we have left, mm-hmm. I want to be able to enjoy it at the fullest. And that definitely comes with mm-hmm. having abundance and, and removing all the things that make life a little bit more challenging, you know, just coming out in the world and having to, having to make it happen every day in a way that can be stressful and overwhelming. So it's comfort. It's comfort for me. What about you, Tierra? I love it. I love that. I love that. That was good. Mm. Um, I, I'm someone who likes to be specific. So my next thing that I'm manifesting is an event space. Mm-hmm. I want to be a, a multi-event space owner. Yes, I'm mm-hmm. ready. Just because, you know, my notary niche is officiating. I love it. And I just want to be able to provide, you know, couples with a beautiful space when they can't afford a huge venue or something mm-hmm. like that with a very competent officiant. Um, and just, you know, be able to help other businesses and local businesses around me, give them a space for them to do what they got to do oh, and wow. just really start building that up. So that's, that's my next big thing. I'm, I'm praying 2023. No, we, we manifest and manifest in 2023. Oh, I will have my first know. event space wow. and we're going to keep building on that. So Thank you so much for this conversation. Oh, yeah. Something about listen, and now it's recorded. We don't said it out loud. The whole it's done. We it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. And so we're gonna pull these clips when the things that we want yeah. come to fruition. We're gonna say, "See, back yeah. in 2022, I spoke it then because uh-huh. it's done." Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's yeah. accountability for me. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. So yes, thank you all for tuning in. Yeah. Um. As a matter of fact, since we talk about manifesting, if you watch this episode, drop in the comments what you manifest in. Drop in the comments what you want, what yes, you please. see for yourself. Yes, please drop that in the comments. Yes. And Ken, thank you so much for being here. Drop your socials. Where can the people find you? So you can find me on Instagram at Kimiani Professional Services. That's S B C S L O C. That's it. I'm not on Facebook, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's dope, though. Yeah, but All right, perfect. Yep. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much, Corinne. Yes. You got anything to close us out with? No, nope, I'm, I'm just grateful that you're here. I'm Man, so I'm glad. I'm, I'm so glad to share space with my Maryland sister. Yes, I'm so proud yeah. of the progress that I'm watching your journey. I can't, I feel like when I came into this, you were so, I, I'm surprised it was just recent, but it just seemed like you were just out there for a long time. And I'm like, she in Maryland. Wow. I'm, I'm living near a celebrity. <laughs> so I'm just so proud of you. I support everything I you're doing virtually. I just wish you the absolute best. And I'm so glad that you were able to demonstrate the very thing that you talk about that works for you by speaking it so we're all watching we're all supporting and rooting for you and we're waiting for that next credit webinar that we're going to pay for so we can build our businesses and our business credits (laughs) that's all i got okay i promise i'm gonna get on it i'm gonna get on it yes well thank you guys for tuning in it is womanomics wednesday so listen i'll see y'all next wednesday Peace out, y'all. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>